Hello. In this uh, video lesson 5D, I will briefly discuss uh, what kind of criteria good policy instruments in environmental regulation will have. So as a reminder, we, we started discussion with this um, uh, institutional approaches, command and control instruments, and uh, market-based instruments, and then various subcategories. So the question is then what kind of uh, criteria then um, the policymakers or, or government regulators have to choose between alternative instruments. Uh, and of course, uh, economists, we, we tend to put a lot of uh, attention to the cost effectiveness. So whether the instrument attains the target at least cost, and typically, of course, the market-based instruments are tend to be the most cost, cost effective um, uh, solutions. Uh, but then there can be also other other aspects, uh, what are, what are known as as uh, for example long run effects and dynamic efficiency, that uh, which relate to the question that does the influence of the instrument uh, strengthen or perhaps weaken over time, and uh, does the instrument create continual incentives to improve uh, uh, improve the pro products or processes over time. So um, if we compare now these market-based instruments that uh, that what are the long-run effects and dynamic efficiency of uh, of uh, this kind of uh, tradable um, emission permit scheme, then of course the idea there is that um, that uh, the amount of uh, emission rights available will will be decreased over time. So so that will then uh, then strengthen and create continuous in, in incentives for the firms uh, to further improve. Whereas if you think of the um, emission tax, then 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 similar effect, of course, could be achieved by by gradually increasing the 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 uh, pollution tax over time, and perhaps the best case, uh, uh, the government would announce this kind of uh, increase already in advance, so that uh, that uh, uh, households and firms could uh, react to that uh, in their planning. So then there are of course equity considerations that uh, policymakers often have to take into account uh, that uh, how does the instrument uh, influence the, the distribution of income and wealth, perhaps also the regional uh, distribution of income. Uh, one, one issue is dependability, that uh, to what extent the instrument will I, can, can actually achieve the target. So there, for example, one could argue that this uh, uh, tradable emission rights are very dependable because the government can directly control for the quantity and let the, let the markets determine the price. Whereas, uh, for example, emission tax is perhaps not so dependable because, uh, because by setting the price, we don't know really what, uh, what uh, or we cannot be for sure that, uh, that how, the, how the quantity will be uh, then. So this relates to these issues like information requirements and cost of use under uncertainty that uh, one could argue that the information requirements for the tradable emission permit system are much, much uh, less because the government can, can uh, indeed, as, uh, as I have emphasized, control for the amount of permits available. And then, then you don't need to know exactly what kind of uh, marginal cost curves the firms might be having. Um, flexibility is also also important that how 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 the instrument uh, uh, how quickly and cheaply it can be can be adapted uh, if for example new information arises or conditions changed or 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 targets are altered so so these are also also re relevant concerns when making making the choice between the different types of policy instruments so one of these uh, this, uh, criteria on, the, on this table I still didn't mention, and this is so-called ancillary benefits. So this, this term is often referred to in the, in the environmental economics discussions, but it, it's maybe good to, good to clarify. And then another term is this uh, so-called double dividend that, that, that it's referred to in the, in the, in the brief description. So, so of course, if you don't know what this means, then then uh, re referring to double dividend doesn't really 
to really help. So I have this additional slide to to clarify on those those uh, issues. So think about, for example, the um, pollution tax. So so as I, as I already mentioned uh, before, when we talked about the optimal level of pollution tax, then of course um, some kind of pollution tax would uh, would generate the tax tax revenue for the government, and and then it would uh, would alleviate pressure to to then uh, then uh, collect tax revenues in other other sectors. So this is referred to as this term double dividend. So by by collecting tax revenues from the from the polluting firms, then then uh, for example, the government can then uh, decrease the the, the um, taxes in other sector, or for example, uh, value added tax, which also has a distortionary effect, or or some kind of uh, income tax for the for the households, which also has a has a, has this kind of distortionary effects. So, so there could be uh, there could be this kind of double dividend in terms of uh, improvement in the environment and then uh, efficiency gains in the economy as a, as a whole. So this is one one appealing aspect of uh, of uh, pollution tax systems that you also generate some some tax income. And in the times when the when the government is desperately needing this kind of uh, uh, tax income, then it may be maybe a very good idea to increase taxes on harmful issues. For example, increasing the fuel tax or or um, uh, increasing uh, tax for, for example, uh, tobacco products that also also uh, uh, have a negative effect on the the uh, local air quality and and this sort of sort of um, sort of. Uh, Issues and it would also then incentivize then the firms to to go to more cleaner types of production. Then I would I would in the in the table before this ancillary benefits and double dividends were were included in the in the same uh, criterion. However, I I would myself tend to think of the ancillary benefits as a somewhat uh, somewhat different issue from this double double dividend. Uh, um, case because that that's mainly refers to this kind of tax revenue case. Of course, you can think of the tax revenue as an as an uh, ancillary benefit as such, but there can be also other non-monetary types of uh, ancillary benefits. So you could think of it as kind of like additional benefits besides this kind of uh, environmental issue that we are trying to control for. So on the right hand side, um, uh, texts uh, also adopted from the permanent all textbook. Uh, there is example that, uh, for example, there might be some kind of health benefits that uh, that uh, suppose that the policy is targeted to decreasing the greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, uh, and uh, we might have, for example, this uh, this uh, tradable emission permits uh, system. But uh, but at the same time as the the um, uh, producers are decreasing the greenhouse gas emissions. Then typically these kind of uh, air pollutants go hand in hand, so there can be can be reductions in other air pollutants as well. For example, sulfur dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, and and particle emissions perhaps also. And this uh, while while we are improving the or while we are mitigating the the global climate change, then we also might improve the local air quality, which might have also health benefits. And uh, of course, ideally, we would like to also take this kind of ancillary benefits explicitly into account in this kind of uh, assessment that, okay, how, 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 what would be this kind of uh, socially optimal level of pollution that we, what, what kind of targets we, we would set. Uh, however, it's often, often difficult to, to take into account everything and there can be still this kind of additional benefits which are difficult to quantify and uh, and evaluate and and in in some sense the idea here is that if we have some cost benefit analysis of the of the um, uh, emissions reduction then perhaps these kind of ancillary benefits are dealt with uh, uh, not not in a quantitative way but more as a qualitative uh, uh, hypothesis that perhaps there's also 
additional benefits that uh, that we cannot uh, explicitly quantify, but also we we consider them as a, as a positive. But there can be also, of course, of course, negative uh, kind of ancillary ancillary damages instead of benefits. So thank you very much for your attention. So the next theme will be with number six, uh, where we move on to economy-wide modeling. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.